Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And um, uh, we're going to continue looking at these lines that we've been drawing out and uh, talking about some of these dates of the Syrian wars. Uh, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? A dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the time that we have each morning to open your word, uh, to experience your presence in our lives, and to feel the comfort of your spirit. And we are thankful, Lord, for the truths that you have given us, the precious truths of your love, and the way that you're interested in every detail of our lives, and that you guide history and prophecy, and that these things are meaningful to us if we study them in the correct way. We ask your Holy Spirit to be here, to be our teacher, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. So um, we were discussing yesterday regarding these Syrian wars, and I, I tried to get some of this stuff straightened, in, straightened out in my mind. And um, so I was looking here, the last thing I was looking at was these um, uh, kings of the Seleucid and Ptolemaic dynasties. dynasties. And um, so when we went back here, we have this, this situation um, there dealing with Berenice and Laodice, right? So, so in that history, we we're trying to discuss how we would lay this out on the line. Now, I know not, I don't know if everybody here saw the video from yesterday. So I'll just quickly go to the lines that we were drawing. Um, so what we had is, um, with Alexander the Great, it's going to be this period of darkness. This is the war with Persia and the death of Alexander marks the time of the end. So the period of darkness is, is, um, dealing with the Greek kingdom. Now the Greek kingdom, if we look at a line, this is a first, second and a third angel's messages, which with its arrival, uh, uh, um, formalization and empowerment but of course this is not a gospel message this is just something that that parallels or illustrates the line we see in millerite history and and what's what's being tested the groups being tested i guess would be uh these kingdoms of greece now greece is not going to uh be the kingdom in which christ is crucified that's going to be rome so Rome has to exalt itself to establish the vision that that role of Rome um, then would be the third angel arriving. It's going to be connected with the Sixth Syrian War. Um, so we have these six Syrian wars and we just laid them out originally as the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, in our minds at least. Um, and then, you know, I had placed 252 BC as the arrival of the second angel. Uh, but I've moved that now to the Second Syrian War when it ends. So this is going to be this treaty where you have um, Laodice divorced and Berenice uh, married to uh, the uh, Seleucid king. Right. And I think I got that right. So that's going to be in 252 BC. And that's going to be the empowerment of the first message. Now, uh, so we had originally the third Syrian war um, as uh, the second angel's message arrives. So this is going to be uh, the third Syrian war, sometimes called the Laodicean war. And, uh, and why is it called the Laodicean war? Anybody know? Well, it relates to the queen Laodice. Right. So it has to do with Laodice. Um, so, so it's also known as the Laodicean War. The Third Syrian War began with one of the many succession crises. Crises, it says I don't know why they write crisis. Crises. Anyway, I don't know if that's how you spell it. That plagued the Hellenistic states, and and Antioch, Antiochus II left two ambitious mothers: his repudiated wife Laodice and Ptolemy II's daughter Berenice Syra in a co competition to put their respective sons on the throne. Laodice claimed that Antiochus had named her son heir 
while on his deathbed, but Berenice argued that her newly born son was the legitimate heir. Berenice asked her brother Ptolemy III, who the new Ptolemaic king, uh, to come to Antioch and help place her son on the throne. When Ptolemy arrived, Berenice and her child had been assassinated. Right? Ptolemy declared war on Laodice's newly crowned son, Seleucus II, in 246 BC and campaigned with great success, his forces possibly being commanded by Xanthippus of Lacedaemon. Lassid right, so there's all this stuff that happens, but um, uh, this, this war is just from 246 to 241. Now, um, and I got to come back to some other stuff too, dealing with the first Syrian war that uh, is important, but uh, does it make sense that we would just put the third Syrian war there? So we just say it's the third Syrian war instead of putting the end there. So I'll put here. Is that okay? Does that make sense? Because we have Raphia, which is going to be connected to the Fourth Syrian War, the Neum connected to the Fifth Syrian War, and then we have the Sixth Syrian War, which I put 168 BC there, uh, just dealing with the Battle of Pydna um, as part of that Sixth Syrian War. And, and that's just because we have this connection between uh, Raphia and Pydna. They're both on June 22nd, 49 years apart. Right. So you got Raphia is... Um, June 22, oops, and then we have Paneum, and then this is Pidna. Whether this is correct or not, this is just, um, just uh, trying to work things, these things out. Any comments on this? I would just like the dates for all those wars. You want the dates for all of? Them? Yeah, well, I, I can, I, I can look them all up, but I know the dates well, yeah. vary so according to. Like, we generally have 200 BC. Nobody's really sure when the Battle of Paneum ha happened. And then the Third Syrian War, just when it starts, is uh, 246 BC. Thanks. Okay, so we got. Yeah, now, obviously, these, these wars you know go over a number of time. There's a number of battles in these wars. And so we're just kind of marking out these major uh, dates connected with this. Okay. So, I mean, I'm very happy with this. As, you know, historically, that we can put this on a line, that we have these six Syrian wars, and that um, we have these significant uh, symbols attached with each of these wars, right? Now with the first Syrian war, um, this one's gonna be um, like 271, I believe, BC. Let's go like that. Right, so you got this first Syrian war, the second Syrian war I put when it ended, um, just because that 252 BC, that's the marriage, divorce of Laodice and the marriage of Bernice, or Berenice. And then uh, you can see in both these, in these dates, uh, 271, we can see the symbol or uh, connected to 217. 
right? So we can see that. Yes, I was just going to say sarcasm there. <laughs> yeah. Between that yeah, and the numbers are mixed Russia. up. Yeah. And then the 246, we have the symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month, just in a different order. So the 264 and the 246 uh, would, would relate to each other. Okay. So, so anyway, that's just some of the things about these dates. Um, I can't remember, like some people I think have Paneum in 191, 199. Some have it, I think even later. Or earlier, I can't remember. Um, so nobody knows that date for certain. Now, now we had an increase of knowledge de dealing with the dyadochi wars, and you know we paralleled that to the seven seven days down at the bottom. So we were looking at the Soviet Afghan war, but this parallels what happened with the wars of Alexander the Great against Persia, and that's. Now it's it's the king of the south against the king of the north, right? Now, of course, the death of Alexander is after this, this battle, uh, but we have the Soviet-Afghan war and it's a, um, uh, a proxy war between the United States and the Soviet Union. Um, now, when it ends, that's gonna be connected with the time of the end, because uh, it ends February 15th, 1989, the time of the end is November 11th, or November 9th, pardon me, 1989. So we can see the parallel there, but here it's gonna be the King of the North defeating the King of the South in the Soviet-Afghan War. And not so much the war itself, but, but that war is symbolizing what's happening uh, with the United States and the papacy against the Soviet Union. And then we have in the top one, it's the King of the South defeating the King of the North, that is Persia representing uh, the king of the north, right? Nothing to do with the directions of the compass, just as symbols representing the United States, in that sense, this two-horned power. And um, so, you know, you could see the relationship between 1798 there as well. So when we have the death of Alexander, that it begins the Diadochi dia dia Wars, and then that leads to the first Syrian war, which is the formalization of this message um, where we now have the King of the North and the King of the South. And it's going to be these battles between the King of the North and the King of the South that are going to fill up this history. Now, you know, I mean, there's lots of details about these battles. I mean, we could spend, we could spend a few months studying the six Syrian wars but I don't think we really need to. I think we have the symbols that we need that we have, we have already sort of established over time. Um, now we might have some question about Pidna, um, whether that's the correct um, thing for that, that, you know, battle for that way, way mark. I mean, we could even, you know, put 191 BC, but, um, but that's not really a war between um, uh, the king of the north and the king of the south per se and I'm, and this Syrian war when you look at the, the sixth Syrian war um, that one is um, so there was the Roman Seleucid war right so the Seleucids lost to Rome right and so they had this treaty imposed upon them in 188 BC so they lose in 191 at that one battle, which was the Battle of Thermopylae. Um, and then there's this internal dissent and rebellions that are occurring within this period of time. So that's the background. So when they get to the Sixth Syrian War, um, the, the Romans are involved in the Third Macedonian War at that time. So this is going to be uh, this issue dealing with Antiochus IV Epiphanes, right? So nothing to do with what happens in Jerusalem, but this is like in 170. And, and the, thir the Sixth Syrian War is usually from 195 to 170, uh, or 168, 170 to 168, pardon me. So you can see uh, 168 is going to be this Battle of Pydna. And since it has this symbol, 
Um, and, and what happens is the Romes, Rome had only recently de defeated the Macedonians at the Battle of Pydna. So what I'm doing is I'm marking at this time where during the Six Syrian War, it's not the Battle of Pydna isn't part of the Six Syrian War, but it's something that happens in this period where Rome is involved. And so I wanted something that has Rome there, right? So I'm just using that. Um, so I don't know if that makes sense to people, but um, there is there is in this war, uh, let me see here. Uh, we we read this before. I'm just trying to. Right. So this is the one where we have this um, Pompilius Linnaeus, with whom he had been friends during his stay in Rome. Right. This is uh, Ptolemy the sixth. Um, but instead of a friendly welcome, Pompilius offered the king an ultimatum from the Roman Senate. You must evacuate Egypt and Cyprus immediately, right? Rome had ju only just recently defeated the Macedonians at Battle of Pydna, potentially freeing up armies with which it could credibly threaten the Seleu Seleucids. So the idea of the Seleucids. So the idea here is that because of the Battle of Pydna at victory of Rome, they're now going to be able to have this issue with Greek. Antiochus begged to have time to consider but Pompilius drew a circle around him in the sand with his cane and told him to decide before he stepped outside of it. Antiochus chose to obey the Roman ultimatum to avoid a new Roman Seleucid war, a retreat that Polybius uh, described as personally humiliating for Antiochus. The day of Eleusis ended the Sixth Syrian War, and Antiochus hopes of conquering Egyptian territory. So this day of Eleusis, I mean, maybe that would be uh, the event that it, because it ends that war. Um, I don't know what people think about that. How, how, how is Eleusis spelled? Uh, e L E U S I S. And I'm just looking it up. Um, the day of Eleusis is probably one of the most famous episodes in all Rome's dealing with the Hellenistic powers. I mean, I knew about this when I was a kid, so. We as, started. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was interested in history, but it's just one of those stories that, you know, I, I studied uh, uh, Roman and Greek history in um, grade six. So <laughs> you learned a lot about wow. like, and architecture and stuff like that, you know, what a Doric column is and an Ionian column, things like that. Um, they didn't teach us a lot about the battles, but they did teach us about this story. Um, so, um, just trying to see if there's any specific article on it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well. Yeah, so, so I think that, you know, we could put the Day of Eleusis there, but I just like Pydna because of its uh, June 22nd date, which I can put in here. Okay, so. So anyway, that's that's the symbols we have for that that line, and so now we we place this line in our history, and and we had started doing this, like writing out the parallels, 
um, in the Daniel 11 document. And Right, so, so this is dealing with the third Syrian war here. Then you're gonna have the fourth Syrian war, right, with the Battle of Rafi as part of it. And then you have the start of the fifth Syrian war. So that's the Battle of Panium that they have here, uh, 201 or 200 BC. Um, and then we have, um, so obviously once we get, we would get to the, the sixth Syrian war, Right, but this is going to go over this battle of Paneum again, and so when Rome go, does according to its will, um, this is going to represent the end of this line. So this is going to be, um, but the thing is, we have some things that are kind of overlapping in how we we address this. So I'm not really sure how how to do this, like how we're going to write, write this up, but we're gonna try. So what we had done, um, just to go back a little bit more here. So let's read through this again. So out of the branch of her Berenice's roots, right? Uh, shall one Ptolemy uh, the third stand up in his estate. He assumes the throne of Egypt. So, so this is, um, and, and, and this part here was just dealing everything, dealing with, uh, you know, the, the period from November 9th to December 25th. So at the, it's going to be here where we have actually the first Syrian war, right? This is going to be uh, Ptolemy III. Okay, that makes sense to people. So when we're, we're dealing with the first Syrian war, that's going to be the formalization of the first message. Um, let me see here. Do I did this wrong? Uh, no, maybe that's the second Syrian war. I always get mixed up with these numbers. Oh, I, I wanted to get back to one thing. Uh, Dwight, you were talking about Arsinoe of Egypt. I was speaking of Arsinoe, yes. Yeah, Arsinoe. It's Arsinoe. Arsinoe? Uh, the way that it's pronounced is Arsinoe. Arsinoe, okay. Yes. Because of uh, the umlauts over the E? Correct. Okay. Yeah, okay, I guess that makes sense. I'm just looking at the Greek here. Okay, so um, so that's gonna be dealing with the, um, the first Syrian war, right? Well, the Arsinoe that I was referring to was Cleopatra's younger sister. And so that's later on? Uh, excuse me? That's later on? Or, yes. or... Okay. So when did she live? At the time where Cleopatra was seeking her league with Julius Caesar and Rome. So Cleopatra the seventh. Correct. Okay. So that's a different time. And this is a different Arsinoe as well. Okay, and so that's not really in our history yet. That's going to be in Roman history, right? That's that is part of the Roman Egyptian history. Yeah, but and yeah, that, that's dealing with Rome later on when in when we're studying Rome. Correct. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay, that's what I wanted to figure out because it she's mentioned in connection with the first Syrian war. Yeah, there's there's several Arsinoes. Okay. Just like with Cleopatra, Arsinoe was another one of those names that was used as well as was Ptolemy. Yeah. Yeah. Ptolemy's used all the time. 
Okay, so um, so in the first Syrian war, um, it it leads to this marriage, and then, but that's going to be. Uh, Trying to see where Ptolemy the Third. It's just sometimes these, um, you know, there's a lot of typos when people write this history. They get confused too. So, um, so I'm, I'm not always certain that they got the right. Um, so let me see here. So when we go here, we have. So we have. It's in 246. So that's going to be. The third Syrian war. So I thought I read Ptolemy the third. That doesn't make sense. Okay, so it's Ptolemy the second involved in the first Syrian war with Antiochus the first. Okay, so that's just because that ends with this. Um, uh, doesn't make sense. I gotta read this again. Because the second Syrian war ends with, um, yes, yeah, so the first Syrian war. Uh, yeah, so the first, the, the second Syrian war concludes with um, the divorce of Laodice and the marriage to Berenice. And the first Syrian war, it's going to end with the marriage of Theos and Berenice, it says. So that means I'm, I'm confused by this. Okay, because the first Syrian war is 274 to 271. So I'll just show you what I'm looking at. I'm trying to make sense out of it, obviously. I'm confused, right? So the first Syrian war was a major victory for the Ptolemies. Antiochus took the Ptolemic controlled areas of coastal Syria and southern Anatolia in his initial rush. Ptolemy reconquered these territories by 271, extending Ptolemaic rule as far as Caria and into most of Cilicia. With Ptolemy's eye focused eastward, his half-brother Magus declared his province of Cyrenaica to be independent. It would remain independent until 250 BC when it was reabsorbed, I see, into the Ptolemaic kingdom, but not before having triggered a sequence of Ptolemic and Seleucid court intrigues, war and ultimate leading to the marriage of Theos. So that's really dealing with the second Syrian war, right? Later on, so 250, I think after the second Syrian war. Okay, um, so what is there about the first Syrian war that we need to take note of, other than the fact that this is the first war? I mean, this is a you know pretty sketchy um, history. I mean, it's not giving us much detail about this first Syrian war. It's just giving us this overview of what, what happened, right? So the second Syrian war is going to obviously follow the first, but it's going to be about, you know, 11 years later. So it, it basically, it sets the stage for what's going to happen later on. That's basically what they're saying. Now, when we look at this prophetically, and we, we look at the first Syrian war, um, so let's go here. So this would be verse five. That's gonna be the first Syrian war, right? The king of the south shall be strong, one of his princes, he shall be strong above him and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. So you got these, this divided towards the four winds of heaven and the king of the south is going to be this strong one. 
and at the end of years, he shall jo they shall join themselves together for the king of um, for the king for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north. So we know that that's going to be Berenice to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the power of the arm, neither shall he stand nor his arm. But she shall be given up, and they that brought her, and he that beget her, and he that strengthened her in these times. Right. So this one is going to have some symbols that we applied. Uh, that is, we have these times. That's the times. That's um, 360 as a symbol, right? And 6256 is, uh, I believe, 17 years and 46 days, right? Yeah, 17, 17 years and 46 days. And then we, we did some things with it in, in these lines where we um, used it as a span of time and we did it in diff various different ways, right? And then we also have this phrase, end of years. So we had connected this with that uh, Soviet-Afghan war. And so when we added together 7093, and uh, the word for years, 8141, Uh, so seven zero. I know I always do these things over again, but yeah. So we got uh, fifteen thousand two hundred and thirty-four, and and I can't remember what we did with that. So I'm gonna have to look here. Okay. So. Okay, so I have to do it this way. Um, so again, end of year. So end two zero seven nine. Seven. Trying to remember what span of time we had with that. Um, yeah, so we had years. So years went from September eleventh to December twenty fifth, um, twenty twenty three. And yeah, the, the 6256 goes from November 9th to December 25th and lots of different spans of time. Um, but what did we do with the 7093? I don't see it here. Okay, that's going to be the number of days between September 11th, uh, 2001, oh, and Stephen's birthday in 2021. Okay, that's why. So there's these connections between 9-11 uh, or not 9-11, um, yeah, 9-11, 2001, and November 9th that are connected with Stephen's birthday, and that 7093 also connects that um, those symbols with Stephen's birthday. But when we put them together, I don't think we just added them together. That's why. I thought there was some place that we did. Yeah, it's got to be here. We'll do it this way. Okay. When we're going to get end of years in later uh, verses as well. So, mm 
I have no idea why it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Must have a typo somewhere. Sorry about that. I'm trying to find this. Okay. Yeah, so there's some work I need to do with this. Some footnotes I need to put in here. Anyway, I'll, I'll deal with that later. Um, because there's something to do there with the end of years, and we're going to have to sort that out. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so anyway, the way that I understood this end of years, um, I guess it really had to do with the word um, that we have 11 9, uh, 1989, and December 25th, 1991. So. So there was something that we did in connecting the end of years to this war. And I don't know why I don't have footnotes on it. Um, it's weird. Um, it was connected somehow. I wish I could remember. Because if you add the end of years, it's a period of 41 years. And 259 days. We did something with it, I believe. So I'm just going to put some things here in this calendar converter. Hmm. Sorry about that. Yeah, we connected it somehow with the history in 1989, I thought. This is 15,234 days. And we connected it with some history. In, we connected it with 2030, but I'm not sure exactly how we did. Yeah, so I don't remember, um, but it somehow connects 
something in 2030, one of the symbolic dates there, back with something in this history. Um, and But it's more symbolic dates, like there's certain dates that are connected by this 15,234 days. So anyway, that's, that marks the end of days, but, oh, what was that again? Hmm. I don't remember now. Okay, so we so we have this period um, from the death of Alexander to the First Syrian War. That's going to mark this period of seven hundred and seventy-seven days. So we're going to say that the formalization of the message is twelve twenty-five ninety-one. So that would be what? What is it that occurs? I mean, we know what happens. It's the end of the it's the end of the Soviet Union. So, how would that connect to the first Syrian War, taking the seven hundred and seventy-seven um, inclusive days, and the Diadaki Wars? So we have a war. It's going to be the king of the south against the king of the north. It's it's going to establish now that we have this these civil wars. And we have the UN, right? So so we saw that the, the characteristics of the king of the south move from the Soviet Union to the United Nations. So, so we mark that just because it's the end of the Soviet Union. So then we're going to have the second Syrian war and this is gonna end with the treaty. Now, when we put 9-11 there as the first angel empowered, what are we marking at 9-11 that has to do with the treaty? This is going to be the marriage of like the divorce of Laodice and the marriage to Berenice. So what would be sim what would that be symbolizing happening at 911? Would we do this or would we do something more connected with um, the, so we have, we have a couple of things that we would have to look at. So we have to decide which fits better where. Um, So which would you place at the third Syrian war and why? And which would you place at uh, the, the second Syrian war? Or does this even make any sense? So, so because what we're saying is that there is something here that that happens in 252. That's the divorce of uh, Laodice and the marriage to Berenice. Would that be better symbolized by spiritual formation or by the Patriot Act? And what's your reasons? or some other thing. You guys have to answer this one. I'm not gonna answer it for you.
I would have to look at this more with the spiritual formation than I would the Patriot Act. Okay. And what's your reasons? Because at this point, we have a woman, the church, choosing to accept assistance from outside rather than biblically or of God, they're choosing to accept the assistance of man. Okay. Now, the situation there with the third Syrian war, did we not look at this before that the third Syrian war would line up with Daniel 11, 6? Uh, we had it with Daniel eleven ten. Okay. <clears throat> but that's Daniel eleven six is uh, the second Syrian war. All right. Right. Um, now then we have, because that's going to be at the end of years, they shall join themselves together for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north. Right. And then, uh, and then really it's seven to 10 that would actually mark the the third Syrian war. Um, if I get this correct. Yeah. So those are going to be the events of the third Syrian war. Okay, just a note there at the one five two three four. One five two three four has two fifteen and thirty four. William Miller's birthday two fifteen time of the end seventeen ninety eight. End of the Soviet Afghan War maybe thirty four A.D. Stephen's martyrdom. I don't know. I have to think about those. <clears throat> yeah so seven to nine is the the third syrian war because 11 6 is the second syrian war yeah okay and then verse 10 that is um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how I'm just looking at Uriah Smith's what he says about verse 10. Because yeah, that one had um, the overflowing and the passing through in it. Okay, so now let me think this through. I think I'm doing this wrong. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's the second Syrian war, verses seven to nine. And the third Syrian war, well, I guess verse six starts that. So I don't know. Confused about it. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, getting back to our history, I mean, I'm going to have to think about this a little bit more. When we deal with the Patriot Act, I mean, why am I asking about the Patriot Act? Is a Patriot Act the type of the Sunday law? 
I think we established that. Okay. And so, and, and it's the second angel arriving, right? Which is the Sunday law in this context, right? That's the mighty angel of Revelation 18 coming down. So, so I think we, we can accept that. We have these two 9-11s and which we've had in our lines before. So the spiritual formation and Patriot Act. Now we know that uh, the 9-11 as the second angel arriving can be zoomed into and it can have a, uh, November 9th, 2019 connected with it. But here we're just, we're just um, addressing it in this way. So when we go back to So that, was the, that was the third Syrian war. So they start the fourth Syrian war. That's going to be the start of it in connected with the third Syrian war. So that's going to be this verse is going to be connected with the end of the third Syrian war and the start of the fourth. And so, so we place this as events. Um, so we have the start of the fourth Syrian war as the Sunday law and we put that as a question so I think some of our understanding of these verses uh, are more like a zoom into things um, but yeah hmm. so the way that we dealt with seven to nine is um, as you can see here. <clears throat> so that's where I'm having problems and oh, how we interpreted this. So out of the branch of her Berenice's wokeism roots, the fat uh, that is the family, right? That's the family. You get the UN globalist, Shalwan, Ptolemy the third. Your genies we put as Biden, right? So, so obviously that's not at nine eleven in, in this interpretation, this application. Uh, she'll stand up in his estate, that is assume the throne of Egypt, globalist America, which shall come with an army, launch an invasion, propaganda campaign, and shall enter the fortress, the U.S. Constitution of the King of the North, that Seleucid. So we get Syria, USA, and shall deal against them, attempt to exact revenge for his sister's death. So that's lawfare against Trump, and shall prevail, win the third Syrian war in the 2020 election, and shall also carry captives into Egypt, their gods, ca carry captives of Egypt, their gods. That is, recover pagan idols captured from Egypt by the Persians in the form of conquest. And this is going to represent pantheism and transgenderism. With their princes, that is, take captives of Egypt, celebrities captivated, and with their precious vessels of silver and gold. Spoils of war, Hollywood and multinationals, tech industries, and he, Ptolemy III, Biden, shall continue more years, that is, Ptolemy died in 221, than the king of the north, which died in 226. So this is Biden and the USA's Lucas II. So the king of the south, Ptolemy the third or Biden shall come into his Seleucus's USA government kingdom. Um, and that kingdom is going to be Syria, USA land at 1 2021. So that's Biden's inauguration and shall return into his own land, UN World Health Organization. So, so this becomes problematic if we're trying to take this because see, we were addressing, in a sense, a line here, right? This, this we had applied in this line above, okay? That's what this application is. So that's not really the application that we're using in the rest of the line. So this line here is a zoom in, right? So all of this 
is zooming into um, the way mark of 11.9 or 9.11 on the other line. Does that make sense? Because this, this is bringing us to our history in a way that, um, you know, because this isn't 9-11, right? This is, this is more within the movement itself, where what we've been drawing out here is, is a larger line. Does that make sense? When I say here, I mean this page you're not looking at. <clears throat> so we're going to have to to sort out how we look at this. So so I think, um, you know, we have that second Syrian war. We have that uh, relation. That's all going to be zooming into the empowerment of the first angel. So verses 6, 7, and 8, and 9 are addressing the empowerment of the first angel. But in this case, it's, it's a line in and of itself. So I don't know how to address this on the bigger, the bigger line. Because we have this whole arrangement with... Do you understand what I'm saying? So when we take this story... Um, that we have in these verses. This is, is this not addressing spiritual formation and its results? You know, spiritual formation, not just within Adventism, but really what that is. Spiritual formation is just spiritualism, right? And wokeism and pantheism and transgenderism. These are all just spiritualism. I would have to agree. Okay. So now we have, so verse six is actually what we would call uh, the end of this, the, the second Syrian war, right? That's going to be when you have, you know, Laodice divorced from Antiochus, and then you're going to have... Berenice married to him, right? I think it's Antiochus. Um, so, yeah, so let me see here. Yeah, Antiochus the second, I think. Hang on. Yeah, so Tychus the second Theos to make an agreement. So that's verse six. These are verses. Uh, so if we go here, sorry, gotta keep switching. What I'm sharing. Right. So we have this in verse. Um, Right here at the end, at the end of year. So this is verse six. It looks like a lot for one verse, but we have a lot added into it, right? So verse six is the second Syrian war. Okay. Now, so that is going to be dealing with spiritual formation. But now we're going to have... Um, if we go back to our lines, that's the empowerment of the first angel's message. But then we have verses seven to nine that deal with the, and maybe verse 10, that deal with the third Syrian war. But if you, <clears throat> with, what, with what you just had on there, yeah. we have spiritual formation and the Patriot Act basically being seen together. And part of this regarding the Second Syrian War is what led into situations with the Third Syrian War, because you have the son of Berenice being 
promoted as the successor to his father mm -hmm. and then the newborn son of Laodice being promoted also as the legitimate heir to the throne. Okay, so you're trying to say that spiritual formation and the patriarch should both be the second Syrian war? No, I'm I'm looking at it, you know, just like what we've got on our lines right here. Yeah. Because in a way, we're lining up the second and the third Syrian war in a similar manner. Right. Uh, so, so they're they're connected, right? Correct. Yeah. And and so here they're both represented as 9-11 in our lines. But when we look at this third Syrian war, verses seven to nine, it is a line in and of itself. That is, it's a zoom into the arrival of the second angel's message or the Sunday law in our history within the movement. Right. So so a lot of the, the application that we made of it dealing with Biden and Trump. Well, that's just zooming into this way mark. There would be another way to look at that, at that, um, those verses that would actually represent 9-11 itself, like the events connected with 9-11 rather than the Trump and Biden. So I don't know if we have to go back and revise that and just have like two different interpretations of those passages to different applications or, or what, what we would do. <clears throat> no, because verse six, I mean, has tons and tons in it and we can see how it lines up with the spiritual formation as a symbol. And then this would up, line up with 9-11 with the Patriot Act. But now the way that we're, we put these verses together, um, we made an application that is later in our lines, right? This isn't, we're not talking about 9-11 here. Let's see, later when we go through these, um, You know, this is going to make sense based on what these verses are saying. Just looking at some of this stuff. So maybe what we should do, maybe just a better way to look at this is, um, because even though we have the Patriot Act in these lines, I mean, it's addressing the Sunday law, but this Patriot Act, does this have any connection to to this history? It could. Because now we're going to get into that history dealing with Trump and Biden. And because once we get to 11.9, we're now in the history of Trump. So what was the characteristic of the Patriot Act that, that we mark? We move from what to what? We move from common law to Roman law, right? Oh, we were saying, yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. So we're now guilty until proven innocent. What about in the pandemic? Is that common law or Roman law? It was Roman law indeed. Yeah, okay. And we can see that these are all types of the Sunday law. One is we know 9-11 is the Sunday law. It's the start of the Sunday law in our history. And 11-9, that's going to be the start of the pandemic. Right? 
around that time, not exactly on that day per se, but in that history. That is, it's going to mark uh, this way mark that we said that, you know, the pandemic was going to come between these two way marks, Raffi and Paneum. And uh, we can see Raffi and Paneum above our, our different way marks in then this line here. But that's just because this is the arrival of the second angel. And so that represents 9 11, but it also represents 11 9, because we've learned that 9 11 is 11 9. Okay. And so when we, we look at this line and we talk about it as the arrival of the second angel, 9-11 was the empowerment of the first angel. And we attach the symbol of 9-11 to the arrival of the second. But really, the arrival of the second is, it's just when you're zooming into 9-11 that you see it as the arrival of the second. It's really 11-9 in our history, if that makes sense. Maybe that's not the best way to say it, but 11.9 and 9.11 are these two way marks. And when Jeff only had 9.11, he had to mark 9.11 as the arrival of the second angel. And it is, but that's in a line that is a zoom into, right? But when we actually draw out this line, 11.9 is the date. That is the arrival of the second angel. I don't know if I said that well, if that confuses people. I don't want to confuse people. But it brings us into this history now. So the arrival of the second hit angel is in our history. It's also at 9-11, but that's just a different line. Because remember, we have these lines. We have Ellen White's line, and then we have Jeff's line. And Jeff line, Jeff's line has kept changing because he continued to zoom into this line. But this line here is actually standing back a bit. A bit. So... When Jeff has a line that goes 9-11, midnight, midnight cries, Sunday long, he has 9-11 as 9-11. But when we actually get into our history, 11-9 is 9-11. And these, this midnight on this line, um, I guess, you know, in this line here that we're using right now, like we know that there's a midnight on that line that Jeff had, right? But we are not to that midnight yet, right? We can agree with that. That nine, that line that we originally had, 9-11, midnight, midnight cry, Sunday law. So what Jeff started to do was to zoom into that line, not realizing he was zooming into it. So when we put 11-9, on our line and we put July 18, 2020 and all of these dates, we actually weren't even on the midnight of Jeff's line. So that line from 2016, okay? So that means when we're looking at this line, we're not looking at that bigger line. When we talk about Raffia here and Pania on this line, the way that we've interpreted this is this is in connection with our immediate history. And why is that? Can we predict when midnight will occur on Jeff's line? 9-11, midnight, midnight cry, Sunday. Long. Can we predict, predict that? No, right? We, we, that, that midnight is, we're approaching it, but anything that we have as dates is something that proceeds. It might, I mean, April 5th, 2030 might be after midnight. But it's just a symbolic date. It's not telling us when something's going to happen. But any of these dates that we have had where things have occurred in this movement, they're not actually marking the midnight on that line we had in 2016. Right? So we've had a lot of things we call midnight and even midnight cry on lines, but those were just zooming into a line. 
and we're still zoomed into a line when we're making these present truth applications. We're not saying anything about the Sunday law in the future because we don't know when that is. All we have is these types of what we're experiencing right now. They're giving us light for the future so that as those things approach, one is we'll be prepared spiritually for them, but we'll be able to recognize what's happening, right? Because of the experience that we passed through. But this experience, our line that we're looking at right now is typical of what is going to happen. So Jeff kept zooming in. And, and so when we did something like July 18th and we said what it was going to be and what was going to happen after it, and December 25th, 2021 is the Sunday law. I mean, I knew that's it's only typical. It wasn't going to be the actual events. The reason why I accepted that Nashville may occur on July 18, 2020, is the destruction of Nashville connected with any of those way marks in those, in those bigger lines? Like, is it the Sunday law? Is it the close of probation? Is it the midnight cry? You know, right, where we look, you know, in reality. So it was this event that I thought might happen on that date, even though our line was typical. We, we, we wouldn't have the destruction of Nashville as anything other than a typical event of what was coming. And so it was possible that that, that could happen and that we could predict that event. But that wouldn't be any of the promises of special significance. It wouldn't be the outpouring of a latter rain. It wouldn't be the loud cry, it wouldn't be the Sunday law, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be the close of probation on, on the bigger line. It would just be something internal within our history. So, so when we look at this, we, 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 we look at this line, we need to recognize what it is. <clears throat> okay. Hopefully that's helpful for people to, to review that because sometimes it's hard to distinguish where we are when we're looking at a line. So when we address this, um, on, on the, in, in uh, the document here, so we go through this and we start looking at this history. Well, this is history in connection with, um, you know, Biden standing up. So, so this is going to be the next way mark, at least it should be. Um, now, this is going to be when Trump is still president. But Biden then is going to win the third Syrian war. So, so when he wins that election, it's ultimately going to end... Um, with his inauguration. And so all of this um, is, is connected with the third Syrian war. So when we look at it on the line, um, we have this 9-11, the Patriot Act, the pandemic, but we have to connect this with uh, ultimately this election that where, where Biden is going to become uh, the president. And then I, I think some of this interpretations of these verses, we're going to have to reconsider specifically what they mean, because we have to deal with Antiochus III. We put Republican president, Trump. So this is going to lead, because um, we've got the Battle of Raffia that's going to be next. So that's going to be January 6th. Um, so I'm not sure, again, you know, as we're sorting this through, I think this is very helpful drawing these things on the line, but we're going to have to go through some of this, uh, present truth application and, and try to figure out exactly how it fits. And we're going to have certain years, a lot of footnotes on this one. We're going to have to go through some of these dates again and try to um, uh, 
and try to figure out how, how we're going to fit those together. Right now I'm hitting a wall a little bit because in order to get through through this next part, it's gonna take a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna have to spend a bit more time again today going through this um, on my own to try to sort through it. And any suggestions on what we can do? Because you know we're gonna have the fourth Syrian war which is of course have the Battle of Raffia in it. And, and generally what we would do, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna write this in right now and then we'll discuss it more tomorrow. So if we're gonna mark this as a time, as a date, because that's mostly what we're doing here, we're just putting in dates. Um, this is going to have to be January 6th, 2021. Now, then we talk about Paneum. Well, obviously, you know, this Paneum here is not the Paneum on the big line. So this is something where the Republicans come back. This is the backlash, right? That's going to happen in connection with this immediate history. Now, Rome exalts itself to establish the vision in... Uh, connected with the Sixth Syrian War, right? It's going to be in this history. So I don't know what this is yet. I don't know what this is yet. As far as dates. <clears throat> but if, if we're taking January 6, 2021, in this line, as Biden winning the election and leading to his inauguration. We would we know that the Battle of Paneum, the response to that, that is the Republicans need to once again control the government. We don't know, probably it'll be Trump maybe, but maybe this is referring to something even after Trump. I don't know. Any any thoughts about this? When I when I, when I look at this and I think about what we have done, uh, I mean, this is going to be. We believe it's in ideological battle. So the idea here is that in the way that we've interpreted these lines is that um, ultimately it's going to be, we have the battle of Paneum. Now Rome exalts itself to establish the vision that's gonna be in connected with the battle of Paneum, but ultimately it's going to end with what happens afterwards. <clears throat> so normally what I would do with this line, you know, as I would put this as April 5th. Now, of course, you're not saying anything happens April 5th, 2030. I'm just saying as a symbol, it represents this. It's the first day of the first month. <clears throat> So in this history, there has to be this response to what has happened with the Democrats, with, with the Republicans. And so whether this is a political win or just a ideological win, that 
we'd have to decide. Um, I mean, do people have a sense that the tide is turning against the le the radical left? Or is that just a false perception because of uh, who we are? No, I think it has turned against them. Yeah. I mean, I definitely know it in Canada, it has. Um, that, you know, that there's this definite move towards what we call the right. But I mean, it's really more centrist in Canada. Our, our right is kind of left of center. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, we're gonna have to come to back to this tomorrow and think about it uh, today. Okay, well, let's uh, close in prayer. A dear Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness and love. And we ask, Lord, for your spirit to continue to work upon our hearts. And we thank you for each person in this study, and we pray for one another, and that you can continue to heal us. And we pray this and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>